for every one mile of road that we put down with our plastics, we're using over one million one-time use plastic bags in that mix. Every year around the world, around five trillion single-use plastic bags are used. And every minute, around a million plastic bottles are purchased. And half of all of that plastic that's produced is designed to be used just once and then thrown away. But what if, instead of being incinerated or thrown into landfill, plastic could be used to build roads, like the one I'm driving on? I'm Frankie McCamley and I'm in Lockerbie in Scotland to find out about recycled roads. Motivated by the plastic epidemic and the poor condition of some UK roads, three friends had a brainwave. Toby McCartney founded McReba, the plastic road company, with partners Gordon Reid and Nick Burnett. This is the first plastic road to go down anywhere in the world, and you've just driven on it. Um, wow. You'll notice there's no potholes in it. <laughs> <laughs> I that did not it. spot a pothole. No, no potholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it looks it looks just like any other road. It's not bouncy. It looks exactly the same. It does exactly the same as any other road. But yeah, no. there's plastic contained within this mix of asphalt that's produced to, to form the road. How did you come up with this idea? Well, I remembered something that I'd seen in India where what they were doing is they were employing people as pickers and they would go and pick out various items of litter, plastic litter. They would stick it into potholes, pour diesel all over it, set it alight. All the stuff would melt down and form a seal in the hole. So you decided to test this on your own driveway? I knew with limited chemistry background that there must be some genetic code between the plastic which comes from an oil-based compound that's fracked from the ground, as well as bitumen that could get one back to the other. Mm. And so that's what I started to do. The initial test on his driveway six years ago proved successful and the company was formed to commercialise the idea. So welcome to McCreva. Thank you. After 18 months of testing and trialling to find a way to safely use plastic in our roads, they found what they think is the perfect recipe. To begin the process of building plastic roads, you need a lot of waste plastic. Luckily, there's no shortage of that. So this is some of the uh, plastics that make up one of our particular mixes. Right, and, and what kind of plastics are we looking at? Where has this all come from? Well, we're looking at various different plastics that go into this, but all of this plastic has come from plastics that can't currently be recycled. So you can see maybe some old bottle tops that are in there. That looks like a bit of a bottle top. Yeah. There's some, um, oh, there's all sorts of different things in there that, well, if we weren't using it, it would be destined for landfill or for incineration. Much of it will end up in our oceans. And, and to me, this looks like a huge amount of plastic, but really, is this just a drop in the ocean? We'll, we'll use this in a couple of days. So, um, you know, for every one mile of road that we put down with our plastics, we're using over one million one-time use plastic bags in that mix. That's a colossal incredible. amount of waste plastics that we can use up in the roads. How do you get this plastic into our roads? So a road is basically essentially made up of two different things. So you've got your aggregates or your stone, most people would call it, and that's stuck together to make a road with what we call bitumen. That's the black oil. So our plastics are used to replace part of that bitumen that goes into that mix. Plastic and bitumen both originate from crude oil, which is formed of long chain hydrocarbon molecules. When distilled in a refinery, the oil is separated into fractions, which are a mix of hydrocarbon chains. One of these fractions, naphtha, is the crucial compound used in plastics. After removing the lighter fractions, the heavier components, including bitumen, fall to the bottom. So this is bitumen here, um, the black sticky stuff that sticks a road together. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And that's the stuff that you would, you would normally drive on or you would walk on if it's a pathway. So that's a bit of road? This is a bit of a road. So as you can see, there's no plastic in the road. It's 
although we call it a plastic road, yeah. there's no actual plastic in it. The plastic is homogenized in to form a homogenous mix with the bitumen that sticks the stone together. And what plastics do, as an example, is we can make that bitumen more stretchy or we can make it uh, not melt at quite the temperatures that a standard bitumen might melt at. What happens if it rains? We've now got plastic in our roads. Are we going to get microplastics running off into our drainage? It's a really good question, but uh, the answer is absolutely not. There is, there's no microplastics. So as you look at this piece of road, you can see that there's aggregates, you can see that there's bitumen, but that bitumen has formed a homogenous mix with the plastics that have gone into it. So there are no microplastics present to leach off. And of course, every road that goes down, we take leaching tests, we take toxicity tests, we make sure that there's nothing getting out of the road that could be harmful for the environment. As well as monitoring the roads once they've been laid, all the waste plastic sourced has to be a certain type of mix. Cami Lauda is the head of quality control. This is the first place that any samples or incoming materials come to be checked for quality control purposes. Um, to make sure that the polymers are the right kind of polymers that we need for the tasks that we're trying to do for the product. Um, it's thermal analysis, which can include polymer identification, lets us know glass transition points, melt points, um, and just to ensure that it does work within the, the bitumen that will be at the asphalt plant. When Cami says polymers, he's referring to the fact that all plastics are made from polymers or repeating carbon-based molecules. The exact makeup of these polymers affects their melting points. Making asphalt requires heat, usually around 180 degrees. All the plastic used is checked to make sure it melts at a temperature lower than this, around 120 degrees, so it homogenizes properly without creating microplastics. It's for this reason that they can't use all plastic waste. Well, the materials that we get in, it's all sourced from waste. There's no like virgin polymers involved in it at all. If the polymers that we receive in don't melt and don't do what they need to do within our parameters, then it could cause a major problem with the, the finished product, uh, which in turn means uh, faults with asphalt mixes and customer complaints and so forth, which is obviously what everybody's trying to avoid. Once a batch of plastic has passed quality control, it goes into the mixing stage. Plastic granules are mixed with their commercially sensitive activator, a polymer that helps bind the plastic and bitumen with the aggregate stone. Over 500 polymers were tried before they found the one that worked. After being mixed, the product is bagged and then transported to an asphalt manufacturer near to where the road will be laid. At the asphalt manufacturer, the mix is added in with the bitumen and aggregate and loaded onto the trucks. In the nearby county of Cumbria, in the north of England, a £1.6 million deal was signed to build plastic roads. Other projects are also thinking outside the box to find practical solutions to plastic waste. In 2018, the first plastic bike path was laid in Holland and in Italy, old plastic tyres have been recycled into plastic railway sleepers. As well as the UK, Magriba is shipping their product all around the world, including the US, Turkey, Australia and Bahrain. So this is product ready to go out to wherever the road is being made, to the asphalt manufacturer that will then add it to their asphalt and then the road will be laid from there. As best we can, we also produce machinery here so that people can use local waste plastics in local roads and that's really where it's at for us. Would you consider yourself part of the circular economy? Yeah, we're an important part of the circular economy. We're taking the stuff that cannot be recycled currently, forming a new style, a new form of recycling, and then at the end of the lifetime of that road, it can be planed back up, reheated, more waste plastics added to it, and that road goes straight back down as a brand new road. That forms the, the sort of the, the bigger circle of the circular economy with regards to asphalt. So we're just a small part of ending the plastic epidemic, but it's nice to be part of that rather than 
causing the problems that we, we see around the world today with plastics uh, in our environment and, and everywhere. So I just don't want my daughters to live in a, in a world where there's more plastics in our oceans than fish themselves. It just shouldn't be that way. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.